Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> it has certainly been a while, but I'm back. I am feeling a lot better with where I want to go with the channel. I just needed to take some time away to reevaluate some things. And going forward with this video, I'm going to be trying out a new system of how I edit my videos. So yeah, just tell me what you think about that. It's going to be one where I want to try and from this point right now is do one take, no hard cuts, just speaking off the dome and then put in some B-roll footage over the top of showing the shoe up close or on foot. So yeah, I'll see how that goes with this new form of presenting, but I really want to keep things fresh on the channel and not be so, I guess you could say stagnant with how I create my videos because I want to be as innovative as one can be on uh, here on YouTube within the sneaker community but I also just want to keep things fresh for myself so I don't fall into a rabbit hole and stop enjoying making the videos because I really love making videos I just love editing I like doing fun things with it and yeah just sneakers in general is becoming a very big passion of mine so yeah I just want to keep it going keep things new in my mind and just be proud of every video that I put out from here on forth. But again, what comes with changing up how I present the videos and slight editing of them as well, is, which will be, is this background here, which I am very proud of and appreciative that I have been able to have in the 50 videos or so on the channel now. I think around 47 or 46 of them have been in this studio space and, you know, this shelf with all these art figures here. Of course, the cores and the Rasta Moons, which <laughs> kind of look like myself. And of course, all of the shoes and how I present them in every video. And, you know, I can't not mention the arcade machine. I am just incredibly proud of myself that I was able to get this. And it has been so, so good to just have this in the back of my videos, just watching it play through adds a nice aspect to the videos and especially when my girlfriend comes over play a bit of NBA Jam I may or may not win every time and I may have let her win once but I won't say anything about that but yeah with all of those niceties out of the way we've all come here to talk about this sneaker the Adidas Gazelle indoor shoes in collaboration with Sean Wotherspoon and this colorway is called the Green Hemp now I can safely speak for I would assume a lot of people out there was when we first saw this shoe we all wanted it. it it was no question about it we all saw it and we're like we need this in the collection not just to display but to actually wear on our feet because these are beautiful I mean these are something that we don't usually see often across all sneaker brands if I'm being quite honest on pretty much all of the silhouettes that they have to offer when it comes to this incredible stitching embroidery detail, however you want to call it, that is present throughout the entirety of this sneaker. I mean, if I'm being honest and looking at my pair, which <laughs> I'm trying to like focus my eyes as best as I can for you guys, there aren't any imperfections in any of the stitching throughout my shoe. There's no loose threading, there's no fraying, there's no mist, like, edging to it where the arrows are going there's it's I, I would dare to say perfect to be quite honest so yeah straight away I just gotta say the quality control on these is top tier but yeah we all want to know what we've clicked on the video is the sizing when it comes to these shoes when it comes to this specific shoe the gazelle indoor we most likely have all gone onto google we have searched adidas gazelle indoor sizing and we've gone on Reddit threads, we've tried to search as many YouTube videos as possible, and we come across so many different answers, and that's obviously because everyone has different feet. But what I will put in the title of this video to help anyone looking for specific advice is when it comes to people with wide feet. Now for myself, it's pretty self-explanatory when you look at me that I would most likely have wide feet. I mean, I was pretty much dubbed a gorilla from day one from when I was born. 
And yeah, my girlfriend calls me Bigfoot, so that's pretty much all you need to know. But again, when it comes to the sizing of these, uh, I will say that for pretty much all of my Adidas sneakers, I go up a half size. Now, I know that we see a lot of sizing recommendation and advice, I'll put it that way, to either go a half size or a full size down in Adidas sneakers. Now, I can understand why people would say that for, you know, if they have narrow feet or even regular feet, but I would not recommend going down even a half size in these at all if you have wide feet. Right, I've got a wide foot, what do I do? You know, I don't want it too tight in the middle, but I'm experiencing heel slip. I don't want my toes to feel crushed like they always do. My instep of my foot sticks up too high, so the tongue's cutting in. If you have a wide foot, especially in these, go up a half size, please. Trust me on this, go up a half size. Now, specifically for the Sean Wotherspoon versions, these uh, green hemp's, you want to take into consideration the materials and how they may or may not form to your foot. So for this one in particular, is with this hemp material, which you can pretty much put in layman's terms as a canvas material. Now, again, if you use a bit of common knowledge and you apply a little bit of logic to, to what you're thinking, is that type of material won't mold, stretch or form to your foot as much or if at all in comparison to leather. So when it comes to all of your leather shoes that we've you know, been very fortunate enough to wear and experience, you may have experienced some leathers expanding more than others, depending on how thick the cut is, or just if it is, you know, fake leather, or if it is a genuine leather from a type of animal, whether it's a pigskin suede or anything like that. But yeah, when it comes to this material, I will put my hand to heart, and this is being truthful, and say that these aren't really gonna mold or stretch perfectly outwards to all the lumps and bumps and grooves of our wide feet. What it will do, which is quite self-explanatory, is it will bump out a little bit where your feet do jut out, but it's not going to magically get comfier over time, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It, it's one of them ones where if it doesn't feel comfortable on your foot at any size range, then it's not gonna be a shoe for yourself. And I feel like for most wide foot people, and especially those bigger sizes like myself, this shoe probably won't be the most comfortable shoe we've ever worn. But like I said, going up a half size at least makes it wearable and not as uncomfortable as it would be going true to size, or again, God forbid, a half size down. So to all those regular foot and narrow foot people, yeah, you're lucky. <laughs> you can enjoy pretty much every footwear, but us wide foot people, it's a struggle, it, it really is. I'm just taking a breather there for a split second. I'm getting a little bit of a dry throat. I should probably have a glass of water up here, so I'll do that next time. But yeah, the probably the two last things that I will mention, the first one being the tongue. So the tongue is quite the, I, I would say this ankle slicer, if I was to, to put a name to it. It is a very thin, quite sharp tongue that I can already imagine if you got a very snug fit to this shoe. This will, oh, oh, that was my stomach. I need dinner. <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> oh, all right. I guess talking without pausing burns a lot more calories. <laughs> uh, right. Where was I? Uh, the tongue. Right. That's where we were. <clears throat> I can imagine this really slicing into your ankle and pretty much with a guarantee cutting into your skin. So I guess you can safely say that going up a half size adds a bit of length onto the shoe, of course, but then it pushes that tongue down a little bit to sit on the roof of your foot or the instep of your foot, rather than trying to bend and crunch into your ankle. I know you could just wear thicker socks, but I mean, if you're gonna be wearing these in the spring and summer in hotter weather, you don't really want to be wearing the chunkiest of socks. So yeah, I would definitely take that into account with shoes that don't have plush kind of cushiony tongues that we see on a handful of shoes because these are a very thin tongue and I don't want anyone out there experiencing any type of cutting or slicing into their ankles. Because again, especially it's, it's a white color. I mean, I guess 
the red <laughs> of cutting into your skin and causing you to bleed may match the back heel tab, but I wouldn't want that <laughs> at all. So yeah, yeah, think about that, please. I, I would put that in the forefront of people's minds for sure, because the forefoot, your toes will be fine. The midfoot, you'll feel constricted. The ankle, we'll get onto that in a second, but take into account the tongue because it's there and it may or may not cause you issues as well. Just taking another breather there because my throat is getting very scratchy right now, but I'm going to get through this for everyone. I'm, I'm going to get through it. So, <laughs> the ankle. We've talked about the ankle collar with the heel slip and how you want to take advantage of the extra lace holes to tie your laces just that little bit tighter so you don't slide around at the back there or anywhere in the shoe. But when it comes to the fit of the actual ankle in the back of the shoe, there's not much padding in this Gazelle sneaker. Um, again, pretty self-explanatory if you look at the images, but for anyone who is wondering, that there's really not much padding in this. So for myself, and again, I would safely assume a lot of other wide foot people who have the bigger sizes such as myself, the entire length of our foot is the issue with the width. So for myself going up a half size, I felt that my heel sat very nicely in the back of the shoe my ankle didn't slip at all my forefoot yes it did feel tight but it could have felt tighter if i went true to size and my toes felt fine it wasn't the worst shoe in the world it wasn't the best shoe in the world for comfort there but it was wearable it wasn't problematic and it was enjoyable to put on my feet for the first time and experience you know, the feeling of a gazelle indoor shoe from adidas and go oh wow it's not as horrible as a lot of people make out to be for wide foot people, but yeah, final verdict for wide footers, go up a half size. <laughs> there you go, there's there's the magic crux of the video. It took me that long to get there, but we got there. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I need a, yeah, oh my God. I... <laughs> Guys, this is difficult talking for so long. I'm gonna get better, trust me, I will. But my God, I need a drink of water. I need dinner. I feel like I've burned at least a thousand calories there. My throat feels like sandpaper, but we'll improve. <laughs> we'll improve. Ah. You said real sweat? It's real sweat. I'm a high performance athlete. Um, Athletes sweat. Sweat, baby. Sweat, sweat. <laughs>